Now, how many of you have a problem doing a foreground? Uh, I'll bet you all have your hand up. It's because uh, foregrounds are very, very difficult to do. Um, they, really what we're doing, we're working from a, a distance to the front. And as we get to the front, of course, we tighten up. And really what we must be is more flamboyant as we get to the front of the painting. Because it's a broad area. And it, it, it's got to have all the elements that go to um, drive it as a foreground. And that means it's got to have both the extremes of colour and the extremes of contrast. As well as a structure. So a foreground to be effective cannot be bland. If it is bland, it's bland by, by the use of bland colours, but it doesn't necessarily mean that the, that the foreground is not busy. It still needs to have all those elements that you would see near your feet, just in front of you. Right? Things can be smooth in front of you, like a piece of concrete I'm looking at now, but within that concrete there's little indentations and little, little movements uh, little, little, little holes and little, little valleys and little hills in that concrete. As I look further away, of course they go away. But this, but this, the, the foreground is really... ...value. So, we need to be able to do that. So how do I do it? How do I do it? Well, how do I get my magnifier? And I'll come back here. I've got a painting here which I haven't finished. It's been sitting here for about a year. And I thought, well, I might as well finish this painting just to show you how this sort of works. And I'm quite sure you've got a painting there that needs that last touch, that needs to have the final fling to bring it into life and to make it a good painting. So the function of a foreground is really a platform. That's the foundation. It's like the foundation of a building, right? You lay the foundation down so that everything sits on top of that and it's got to have a strong link into that foundation. But the foundation can't be just a, like a, a flat lump of concrete. For us, it's got to have the movement and spontaneity and the ups and downs and the ins and outs to make it interesting, to make it a supporting foundation of interest. It might, it might not be something that you look at immediately, like in this painting here, you're looking at the narrative. You're looking at the longhorn cattle and the, and, the, and the stockman over here. That's what you're really looking at in the sky. But where, where this is all sitting is important. So at the moment, I don't like it. Right? It's too busy. I can see here I didn't bother to finish it. I was tired when I did that. So I've got to bring that one back up. So remember what the elements are of a foreground. Remember what I just said there about, about um, um, whatever I said. Where's my glasses? Now, I'm going to squirt some paint out here, so just bear with me. Look over my shoulder as I get ready here. And I'm putting out some yellow ochre. I'll get out a bit of, there's a bit of phthalo, phthalo blue, right? Well, that's going to give me a dark, a really strong dark. So I'll put a bit of that out. Here's another dark. Here's a, here is some permanent rose. Right? You can see that the value of that is a dark red. So I've got a dark blue. Now I'm going from a dark red. Now that's key to the whole thing. Remember, everything about painting, particularly when, when we get into big paintings, we need to have that shift in colour from a warm colour to a cool colour. So it's important we when, we, when we're laying out our palette, we, we consider what we're going to be doing, all right? We consider, I've gone for two very strong darks there, a dark red and a dark blue. So I'm thinking already of the contrast that's going to exist within the foreground. Okay, I'm thinking I need a really strong dark in there. But when I put a dark in, if it's a blue, beside that and mingled with it will be a red of the same value, hopefully. And then I can ratchet my, my values up to the highlight. So let me, let me put down a few other colours that can go with that. They can work within that and, re and bounce around with that. I've got a bit of cerulean here. I'll put a bit of that out. Um, I've got some yellow ochre. I need a bit of um, uh, burnt sienna. 
you know, find some burnt sienna in this mess I've got here. Here we go. We've got a bit of burnt sienna here. Not much. But it's a wint. And there's a, there's a, um, a few people wonder about the paints that I use. They say, oh, he doesn't use good quality paints. Well, I do sometimes, folks. Like, like there's a Lefranc, right? Um, I've got, I, use, I use good quality. They're, they're Winter and Newton I'm using. Sometimes I'm using what I get. I use what I can get. If I'm in the US, right, I'll use the best I can get. I'm here in Thailand and I don't have the luxury <coughs> of being able to buy such <laughs> high grade paint tubes. So I'm sort of compelled to do, to use what I can get. So I, I'm not, I don't make an excuse for my career saying, oh, I'm not going to paint today because I don't have that nice light red I used to have. Hey, get used to it. Get real. Find another one. Okay? Learn to mix. Okay? If you don't have exactly what you want, you can still get from A to B. You don't have to go into Mercedes Benz or a Rolls Royce to get from A to B. Sometimes you've got to walk. Okay? So those of you who think that, oh, he just, he's a sort of fashion artist, he just paints with student quality paints, well, hey, I'm still painting, folks, right? And I am a prisoner of what I can get and what's around me. So there we go. So what are we going to do here, Bob? Well, we're in Texas, right? So the the foreground in Texas, t Texas is a, is a plain area. In the northeast, you've, in the north um, east, you've got the Panhandle area, and then it's basically flat country, um, the land of the Longhorn. And uh, uh, so if I've been there. And I've seen the, <clears throat> the land, but it's still a foreground. Right, Furby? Hello, Furby, what you doing? So, swing light across in here. I want to create drama. So, drama. So here we go, I'm using a, I'm using a fan brush, all right? So I'm gonna come down, I'm gonna mix up, I'm just gonna put together very quickly a dark, made from the, that, that phthalo blue and a red. I'm going to bang this in here, I'm going to put a bit of, now there's, I'm putting some um, uh, burnt sienna in there, and I'm going to create some sort of interest in here, I want the eye to come in here. It's all a bit low this, this narrative, but I'm very compressed in here. I've got something I've started to work over here. Um, what is that? Let me look it through my magnifier to see what what sort of plant is that? How is it structured? What does it look like? Where's the darks and lights? Where are the lines in that? What's the structure of that plant? I see the structure. Right. Let's see. It's a nice green. We've got this nice dark. I like this photo. Because we've got elements. We've got dark in here, which could be over here. Then we come into some green in here. We've got this sort of bunch of bunch of, uh, of, of, a, of a plain plant there, it's got a yellow top to it. I've seen this plant, I don't know what it's called, but it's a great one to put in a painting. So I'm going to just crash in here with this dark first. That'll pull me up, that'll get me up into the painting. Now even though it's a dark, it's a mix of blue, I can see it in there, and there's a bit of purple in there. Hey, some purple. I've got some purple here. <coughs> Where's that purple I saw the other day? There it is. Now there's some purple. So I'm going to squeeze some of that out. That'll get me really fired up in there. Uh, ah, got it. Now, I've got paint all over my hand. Look at that. So, obviously I don't clean my tubes too well. But nevertheless, that's how it goes. That's how it goes, folks. So let me go back to this. This. So I need to look at it. I need to look at it. I need to really look at this. I'm letting the light come through. Well, I like it because it's, it's, it's an exercise in light and dark to start with. And across this foreground. And we've got a mix of plants in here. We've got a mix of colours. 
and they're good colours. There's, there's, a, there's a mauve in there, there's a brown. Mauve green, and then behind that, where the light is, we've got that lovely this here. We've got this here. I've got to crash some light across, bounce it across here, and pick up some of the parts in here to give this meaning. A mauve in there that's holding it all together. If you squint with one eye, you look five, four, five, up to six, all holding this together. <coughs> and then this yellow and green comes out. So let me find, let me put in a, a sort of a hole in. That, of course, and I think I can get this sort of a mauve, a, a bluey, a little bit of Australian and a little bit of that alliterate. Oh, you'll say, oh, <laughs> too much, Bob, too much. It might be too much, too. We're going to find out, aren't we? Well, that's going to be the light coming through there, but there'll be a little bit of mauve through that. Shut it. You can see I'm just letting know that these hairs up here, as they've separated, I'm using those to just fill in and suggest a, a sprinkle of that mauve in there behind because that really I suppose that mauve is really of the light that's bouncing on the grass and other work. Let me put a bit more and start to pushing it in to that other area. I can see that brown in there. See this brown way of working its way through here? Burnt sienna. Last touch this painting. So if I pop that in and out of there, the ties just calm it all down, get it all sit, let it, let it, let it sort of sit there first. Now this green here, I like this, there's a bit of dark coming across here, I like that. Maybe I can use that in here, and then run this green across up here so there's a bit of a pattern. And that'll give me, a, I've got a, a good strong dark in there. Let me do that. So that's going to be a bit of phthalo blue and some alizarin. And I'll break through into that. Let's get this brush working. So I'm using those hairs. All right, so that's looking all right. Break it through. Put a little bit of yellow, a little bit of burnt sienna in there. So as I break through, I'm breaking through the dark. And in that dark, I've got a red and a brown and a blue. Chop. See this brush? It's not bad. 
I'm chopping into this now as I go across. Chop, 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 and then tap, tap, tap. So it's, it's a little bit like a blade, this brush. There's a bit of blue in there, that's going to look good. Bounce it up and down, change the angle of attack all the time. A lot of people, they have trouble with foregrounds. Foregrounds can be a real nightmare for a lot of people. It can be a real nightmare. Here we go. Now what we're going to do over here was pick it in here and push the eye back in. It's always good to work out an old painting too, I've got to tell you that. Very good to work out an old painting. See how I'm using the cut, the, the, the uh, side of this brush to replicate these sort of vertical strokes of grass and twigs and other things. Keep on going. Keep going. I can just put a bit more blue in there. Just change the, change the temperature a little bit more. Keep on shifting temperature now what have we got here we've got a horse running walking through there and we've got a horse there so we've got some shadow underneath those horses well we can put that in back down in here now now this is looking okay I like this in here, and it's a mauve with a bit of blue, and it's a, it's grass. It's a sort of burnt grass. So I'm going to try and see if I can do something here. Too. It's really a grey that I'm using, just to tie it together. Not, not, any, not that important, but it's just a spiky little thing where we've got grass that's dying. <coughs> grass is sort of on its last legs, and it's just appearing there. That's not too bad. I want to get in this green here. See this? <coughs> yeah, it's green and green with a bit of blue, and there's some nice fawn colours cutting through it. But the overall is a, a spiky, spiky short grass. Not a long, long blade grass. It's a short grass. See if I can get that colour and see what it's going to look like in there. I've got to be careful because there's mauve in it. There's a lot of mauve in that. Now where's that mauve? Here it is. So I'm going to put that mauve in. That'll, that'll tie it into what I've already done. A bit more. Okay, see if that's going to work. Bounce in here. Get down in here. Can you see that, folks? That's a good colour. That's a really nice colour in there. That, that works. 100 miles an hour. That really does work. Look at that. Beautiful switch of warm. Warm, cool. And we've got the nice dark base. So now we're just moving up the value scale to give this a bit of a bit of a kick in the pants. It's looking pretty good over there. <coughs> Here to lift this up, we don't want to flatten it out because if we're low to the we're low in the painting here, so we, that's why we need to have this 
we, we really do need to work the, the use these big long strokes and some dark, and some flashy little spots. Do another one here so you can see it. This brush is I might add this to my paint kit I think. I might add this brush to to my little paint my my brush kit. I'm gonna do a brush kit. In fact I'm going on Monday on next week I'm going to a factory and I'm taking up my brushes that I want made and I'm going to tell the factory to make ask them if they can make me my brushes. Because I, where I am it's hard to buy good good brushes here so I might as well get them made. Put them in a nice little pouch. See that colour there, how it's repeating the colour up here? Now I'm just checking that. And we've got some little high colours to go in here yet. As we get further away we want that colour to be over in here because it's repeating that colour. So it, We've got to tie our painting together. And so we've, we've got colours that are doing that very nicely. We can come back in and pick up these cattle later on. We're tying it in now. All coming together in this area here. But we've got these life supporting colours down here. Let's get some more green in there. I want to put some green in there. It's getting too, a little bit too boring. With some yellow. <coughs> a bit of yellow here. There's a bit of, a little bit of, there's some yellow there. There we go, there's some yellow. All right, I'll put a bit of that down there. And put of that in with my blue. I'm going to stab this. I'm going to stab this brush. Different strokes. Keep on changing your angle of attack. That, folks, is how that grass actually looks. Yeah, that's how it looks. You don't copy what you... You don't copy the... You keep on moving your hand around so you're changing the angle that you're hitting this canvas with. That's the secret to, to good painting. slowly coming across here. We haven't king hit it yet. We're moving our way up and down the valley. I want to get, I want to go back now and put some hard darks in. We keep control of this here. I like this idea of some, of, um, I like the idea of some darks cutting through the light. See if I can get that working. Turning the brush, always changing the attack. Now 
is that sort of funny green. It's like a grey green, but it's a, it's the one you find in the foreground in the in the shadow areas. <coughs> Let's get up here and see if we can get this. I like this. We've, we've been working the grey so far. Let's see if we can do this light one up here. See how that's going to look. It's, it's a different. It's formed in a different way. It comes up like a. It comes up like a. Uh, comes up like this. I remember seeing all this. You never, when you're out in the field, you never really pay close attention to these small parts of structure. What you're doing, you're looking at something, you're saying, that's a good scene. So you tend to take the photograph and look at that as a good scene, as a scene that you want to remember. But what is it you're really trying to remember? Or what do you go away with? You go away with a picture of the scene in your head. You don't necessarily go away with a, with a detailed picture of all the elements in that scene. And that's what a photograph is good for, because when you take a photograph of that, it's never as good. The photograph is never as good as the scene that's implanted in your head. But the elements within that scene are kept in the photograph. And that's for me, is, is what I return to. I return to look at the elements within that scene that made me want to look at that scene. Um, the photograph will never capture the light and the magic and the, and, the, and, the, and the full effect that caused me to look at it in the first place. But it will capture what went on there, the structure, the, the, uh, the value contrast, some of the colours. It captures some of them, but it always captures structure. So that's what I'm looking for, structure. I know the structure of this yellow plant here, <coughs> this one, What's the structure of that? You can see by the shadows that we, we can see by the shadows that it's growing up in sort of shafts. Not blades, but a shaft. In other words, a clump, a rising clump of foliage dressed with a yellow head to it. And that yellow head, sometimes it's leaning this way, those, those clumps are leaning, but they tend to come up in a group and then they tend to break at the top. Right? Check. Really pretty. Now the thing about this photograph is the light is coming from this side. In mine, I've got to come from that side. So this one is left to right, and my paint is right to left. So I'm just going to look at it, just keep that in mind so that I don't put the shadow on this side. Shadow's got to go this side. So what's happening up here, I want to look at now. Where the light is hitting, how is that creating the shape at the top, at the head of those clumps? How, how is it working? It's like a bunch of little circles up there. Like a bunch of little circles. Then we've got this drop down of a shaft dropping down, being in shadow as well. It's like we've got a bunch of, 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 um, of marbles on top of, a yellow, on top of a green shaft. See, this is why the magnifier is so important, because I'm not guessing. I'm saying you analyse this structure, because however, this, this, I've got to do this with a couple of strokes. I'm not going to copy what this is, but I want to analyse and get the shape, the structure, in my head, so that when I use this brush, There'll be a couple of certain strokes, movements of that brush, which will replicate that look. First of all, I'm going to build up these yellow, no, these green shafts. And of course, they, inside those green shafts, I don't know if you can see in there, inside those green shafts, you can see their shadows. So those shadow light, those shadows are, 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 are creating the shape of the green shaft. And as we go up the top where the head is, you can see those sort of bunches of, of marbles, I'll call them, <coughs> that are creating the head, the look of the head. Clumps, round clumps of yellow flower. So this is this desert plant. And this is what I use the magnifier for, to work out these structures, because everything in the painting is a, is a replication of reality 
of sorts. Um, we're copying the reality of what we, ha what we have around us. When we paint a person, we have two legs, a body, arms and a head. So there's a reality, there's a certain, there's a certain shape that, 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 um, that, that tells us what it is. So we need to get the shape for these elements in this, in this landscape. I have down here so far. Let's see if we can do it up here then. All right, here we go. So I'm going to find, try and put a yellow in there. And then maybe what I should do, oh, maybe I'll just go straight for yellow. Interesting yellow. Is it that yellow? That might work. Can you see that? See, now look at the, what stroke am I using there? I need a better yellow than that one. This yellow is a real, it's a real sort of uh, bright yellow. It's a, it's a different yellow. What can I use? Here's something here that I'll do. What's this tube? This is called cable turquoise. It's about 100 years old. Oh, and what, what, what will we do? I'm using an artist oil colour cable, Windsor Newton, permanent series. This would be about $50, this tube. And I've obviously bought that in America. See if I can squirt a bit of that out and mix that with this lemon yellow. Is that what it is? It's called a pale yellow, but I'll mix it with that. So these two together. Cobalt turquoise. And... This pale yellow, it looks like a lemon yellow in other parlance. And maybe if I put a bit of the, the, um, where is that tube? Here's another green. This is a gambling. What is it? A vermilion. Well now if I put a bit of vermilion in there, that, that might stir it all up again. If I get out of the tube. Alright, let's see what we can do with those. Sort of clean the brush a little bit. Here we go. What am I going to get? Well, it's sort of a bit different. Not much. But, Go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. Light coming that side. Climb up the side here, so we're going to push the eye back into here. I'm going to work quick. I want to get the look of this right. See if it's going to work. If it's going to work or not going to work. Let's put a bit over here. We've got a small plant, the same sort of plant, sitting over here. A little bit of a thalo, a bit of thalo blue in there. I wonder what that's going to do. Oh, there we go. Grows up in these shafts. Okay. Do more. Some yellow. As it comes up the top, it breaks. You get these shafts of yellow. put a, some real yellow on the top. Where's that yellow? Very, I don't want that yellow. It doesn't have to be that yellow. It's really an orange. What I want. I want an orange. It's an orange yellow up there. I'm going to mix those two together. Now let's see. 
I can't that's now we're talking. over here. Some darks in amongst that. See if we can separate those heads. Purple, alizarin, and phthalo. Shapes. Dots and dashes in here now, folks, to break it up and to give it a bit of meaning. the interest to be over here so I'm going to push the contrast into this area. This is where we're going to be focusing the main narrative. Let's go for a bit more light. Light bouncing across here, shaft coming across here and picking up just these little bits of grass and and so on. So there we go. Now I can go down to a small brush and pick up the other bits of detail. The dogs ate the, the dogs ate this brush the other day, so I've only got half a brush left. But uh, I'll 
maybe they just wanted to learn to paint. I'm not sure what they were doing actually. See how you use a small brush? Bang. And if I shift it right up the top like that, I'm pushing the eye back up into the narrative. Now watch what I do here. Break it all up. <clears throat> nice big lines. Because we've got a We need to push it up like this and make this part work. Now, what we need is that let's take this yellow up a bit further. Or green. Let me get to it. Here's a little bit I've taken off that, of my palette there. Drop that around, a little bit of that here and there. It'll just spike the brain a bit when people look at it. It'll just be a little bit of a, a dab of colour. It makes it su a surprise. It We use a um, here. Just work your way around. Put a little bits of light here and there. Grass. 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 Grass.
us here. So, ping this, ping this part up here, a nice bit of it. use that as an area just to show And so on. So there we are. Because I could come in with some darks in there now and cut through them with some more darks like this. Folks, stay, stay tuned to um, the Facebook because we'll be talking about the workshops again shortly. Um, a lot of people have been asking about them and as I've said, I'll be... So, if you're... If you want to go, if you want to attend a workshop, just keep on looking at the at this page, the one you're on now, the Facebook page, and there'll be a notice come up there shortly about the workshops and how you can get involved if you want to be in one. We you learn all this, how to do foregrounds, and but importantly, how to. Key is a photograph. So really, in a workshop with me, I'll, we'll go outside. <coughs> we'll look at an area, and we'll say, "Okay, well, what are we looking at?" Imagine we talk about the inspiration before we go out about, say, a girl walking casually on the side of a hill, lost in her own thoughts, and so that might be the narrative. Okay, then we look for the little hill, <coughs> and how are we going to how are we going to um, use that hill, the, the, the angle, that gentle angle from left to right. Or is it approach? Is it right to left or left to right? Logical tool we use to connect to people. So we look at what these, so we go out and we find that little hillock and that little slope. And then we take photographs of it. Hopefully there's a little bit of a tree behind it. There may, may be a big tree with a small one beside it. Is it only one tree we want? What's the shape of the tree that really connects to people? Is it, a, is it a squarey looking tree? Is it a tree with a strong trunk? Or is it just a nice foliage with some, that, that's going in and out, that's got some nice rolls to it and more circular? And then we said we talk about what 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 you like to see, what shape that you like, not what I like, but what you like. Because in a workshop, any workshop with me is about you. It's not about me. It's about you. It's about me helping you understand who you are naturally are as an artist. What's your natural, instinctive uh, feel about a shape? What's your natural, instinctive feel about a colour? What colour do you like? What's your colour? Not my colour. What is your colour? Once we establish that, we can then move forward. So we move forward. 
on the spot little painting you do to colour code what you see. Right? Uh, because a photograph will never get all the colours that you see. You'll see a lot more. didn't see when you stood in front of that little hillock. Right? So we might have a model walk across up the hill and we'll pause her to get the light that we want. Now what is that light? Is the light a full on light like a, like, a, like a calendar type of photograph or is it an art type of light? An artist light? And what is an artist light? What sort of light works for the photograph not just to remind us of the shape but if we can get it right by using say a reflector and we can I can show you the pose and how to serves us as an artist take that photograph and I'll talk about how we get that right, how we talk to a model to get her to do I don't know, I'm a man, but there's a, there are certain dresses that connect to us better than all these little nuances that books to attract a viewer. You know, if you go through a book of paintings, you'll go to a couple of paintings that you like instinctively. Ask yourself, why do I like those particular paintings? Because the answer in that is the answer for you to bring to a workshop. So if you ask a question, you'll know you'll have an answer. You won't be searching for it. or at least have some firm answer or direct to someone like me, I can reverse that and put it back to you as a painting and show you how you use what you are instinctively as a template for a painting that you like. And generally what you like is with what other people like. Because infected by the, the way the, by the ways of that community, by the values, not just the values, but by the, the, the nature of appreciation of that community. If you're, if you're born in a, in a community which is cold, which has got uh, fall colors and where people are outdoors, you'll reflect that in how you uh, position yourself with painting. So that's what we do. So the tools in a, in a workshop, we'll, we go through that and we come back into the studio with this collection and then we use our tools. That painting that you want to do um, and I'm just there to help guide your hand and to guide your thoughts. That is what a workshop with me is about. It's an adventure into painting. It's an adventure into, into discovering who you are and what you are as an artist. And for me to bring that out of you. We're not Three days we've got a good start. And if I come back and you happen to be with me again, we'll take that, I'll look at what you've done, how far you've gone along that road, and then we drive it even further. Right, so um, you can be a new and novice painter, you can be new to the whole thing, or you can be experienced. Either way, you're in the seat and we're going to look at what we see together. And we're going to talk about what we see together and we're going to get to the home base together with a painting. So that's what it's all about. So listen, I'm going to leave you now. You have a great weekend. And uh, enjoy your loved ones and enjoy um, whatever you do on the weekend, all right? And I'll see you again early next week. So uh, stay tuned to the, to the Facebook page there and look for the banner that's going to come.
an, an email, a, a, a newsletter the other day about the magnifier. Yes, we're into the Chinese New Year, and that's cluttering up my life. But that's how it goes. But we're going to get there, folks. Believe you me, we're going to get there. And I'm sorry if it's tardy and, and it's taking too long. Um, but we're going to get there. And we will get there at our pace, and, and that's the way it should be, I suppose. But I'm, I'm, I know you're disappointed, some of you, and are very, are very want that magnifier because it's going to help us hugely. Um, we'll, it'll come there, all right? So bear with me. I'm sorry about it. And bear with me, okay? So you enjoy your weekend and, and I'll enjoy the dogs. Bye for now.